Hello and welcome to Stupid Guitar. Today we're going to uh, start a new build. Um, and I figured I'd just make some videos to show how my process is and also to be able to document it for possibly competing in the great guitar build up next year. So <clears throat> This is the one we're going to start on today. I'll just show you what I usually build from. Uh, this is uh, walnut. Big chunk of walnut that I bought eight or nine years ago. And maple. Now usually I glue these together in some sort of configuration and build using that, but I recently bought this off of Stumac and it's a one piece poplar body that we're going to use and I figured I'd just show this because I've never used a one piece before and it will dramatically reduce my build time <laughs> because a lot of the time for me goes into joining the pieces. And we have this torrified maple that we're going to use as the neck. So I haven't really figured out if I should split this and make it a, um, a, a, a least three piece neck with either walnut in the middle or a five piece where I have two thin strips of walnut going down. And we're going to use this Siricote fingerboard. It's going to be awesome. Look at that. Look at that. Like the screen on my GoPro keeps turning off. Look at that. It's beautiful. So we're going to use that. And I'm not really going to go uh, into big details about my process. I'm not going to film myself using a bandsaw, for example. That's pointless. I won't be able to talk anyway. And you've seen people using band saws. But so usually I <coughs> I build I have this model called uh Hecaton, which is what you've seen outlined here. But I figure I'd try and make a um, a single cutaway this time. Uh, so not really telecaster but more of a just exactly as it is but single cutaway and I haven't really decided on either of these lines yet so I'm just going to cut to the outermost and then because I can always take off more but I'm really I really like to see see it physically um, I don't know if it's my spatial awareness that there's something wrong with, but I can't really, I can't really, you know, see how it's gonna look just by the drawings. I need to sort of see the, the chunk of wood, and then we're going to inlay into this this neck, uh, of course, a truss rod and two um, carbon fiber support rods. So it's going to be real stable. Also, this torrified maple is supposed to be really stable to begin with. So I'm very excited to see how the neck's going to feel. So I'm just going to cut this out now, I think. And then we'll take it from there. Um, yeah. Hardware-wise, I have these hip shot tuners. These classic open. They are gorgeous, and a uh, hip shot uh, bridge as well. Uh, I haven't used either hip shot tuners or hip shot bridges before, so that's going to be new for me. And yeah, you'll be able to see my process. So I'm going to cut this out now, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so now the uh, let me just turn off the. The uh, air purifier. Uh, sanding and woodwork tends to create 
a lot of dust so make sure you wear a mask and have a filtration system or an air purifier of some sort. So now uh, I've bandsawed this out. As you can see I'm not a master with a bandsaw. I need a lot of helping cuts and also my saw is rather small so I can't fit the entire piece onto the table. That's why I need to I need to go back and forth and yeah. So now uh, now that this has been roughly cut, I could either sand as I've done here, I've sanded this section on my Triton spindle sander, but I'm gonna route uh, the remaining out because I have a template that I made for my Hecaton model. And from here, from this point, all the way around to this point, they're exactly the same. So I'm gonna use that. Um, I don't see a point in showing you how to route. That'll just take up uh, memory space for me. So I'm gonna do that and I'll get back once that's done. We'll see about the pickup and bridge placements and stuff like that. Because this is a, a bit, um, the, the Hecaton model is made to be down-tuned or standard concert tuning minus one. So the E strings are down to D. So it's basically down a step. And that has a, a bit longer uh, scale. So this would be 25 inch scale uh, or similar. I'm building in metric, but let's say for now, 25 inch scale. So I need to figure out the bridge placement and then the pickup placement after that. So I'm going to wrap this out first and then we'll take it from there. All right, so now let me just turn the dust off again. I wear earplugs uh, and listen to audiobooks when I do my guitar building, so I don't really notice the uh, the air purifier. So, well anyway, now it's routed and I've uh, sanded it, uh, rough sand on the Triton spindle sander. Now, a little tip when routing. Let's see. <coughs> I use uh, these to begin with. These are top board bearing routers from Stumac that go, if you have a template, that is, they go uh, where you would have the, uh, the template sit on the body. Uh, this will follow the template and route the wood. And then once I do that, two two passes until this goes onto the uh, the body itself. Uh, then I switch to a longer uh, router bit so I can take the rest in one sweep. Now, a thing to remember about this is to, if you have, say you have uh, like uh, four or five millimeters sticking out uh, below the router, the, the routing, uh, uh, mark that you made then go in tiny tiny increments you do not want to have the uh, router bit eat into the wood because I'll just throw off huge chunks and potentially damage your body it does take um, uh, some time to do this but uh, the end result will be that you have a body to work with. You don't have to start gluing patches in. Now, as for poplar, I never worked with poplar before. It's very easy and beautifully uh, simple to route. It almost carves away like butter. Um, you can see it's very fine grained. This is a cut up from the from when I band sawed. Uh, 
and it's very light. I believe this body will be below, I think it'll be about 3.54 kilos maybe when I'm done with it, which is a lot uh, lighter than the maple and walnut that I usually use. So uh, now let's see where the pickups go. As you can see, I drilled into it uh, because when I use, uh, when I have my template, this is a template that I have made for my, uh, I have the screw holes where the controls go here and where the pickups go because that's going to be routed away anyway and I don't want to have the hassle of using double sided tape or even the crimson guitar uh, masking tape trick it's it's a bit of a hassle it's easier to just screw in and uh, no it won't come off also I have the the holes countersunk so that I can screw the screw heads will be below so that uh, the router won't stop in them anyway. Also, I clamp it down uh, to the table, clamp to the edge, so that I have a longer working space, or like this. Put a clamp here, clamp here, then I can do almost uh, half the body in one sweep without having to move it. Um, as for routers, um, we can go through my workshop a little. I just use this cheap Bosch, um, it's powerful enough for anything I need and it'll um, accept you can easily get collets for it. Now here's the, the long router bit that I use. This is a cobalt router bit. The brand is cobalt and it's super sharp. I use uh, Makita power tools. Uh, I used to use DeWalt before but then I had this issue where I couldn't push the button in then I had to sort of jiggle it around and so no more DeWalt. Then I have this beautiful, beautiful Triton uh, spindle sander. This is worth every single penny. It's pretty cheap to begin with, uh, but you basically get a band, uh, sorry, belt sander and spindle sanders in all together. You can just remove this cassette and put in the spindle. Uh, my bandsaw, sorry my workshop is tiny. My bandsaw, this is a tiny bandsaw, you can see with my hand for scale. Tiny, tiny, tiny bandsaw. It's uh, 375 watts I believe. However, it does everything I need. Uh, I don't need a bigger engine or a longer blade or anything. Um, as long as you keep your uh, your table waxed, so it's nice and smooth, it'll it'll saw anything with uh, minimal resistance. Um, as long as you don't try to push two big pieces into it, uh, it'll saw anything. I don't. You cannot book match with this because the uh, the guide won't go high enough. So your any book matching you will do will be tiny. It'll be like three inches, four inches maybe. So you can't really book match anything with this. But I I have the ability to go to a much larger workshop and use a huge band so if I need it. Uh, but I haven't needed to yet. I haven't book matched anything. Then uh, over here, so I have a large table here that I can work on and I have all my stuff on because I'm kind of untidy. Here I have, let's see, it's just my, my drawing for the hackathon. And here's my mask so I don't have to wear goggles with it. Um, so here's the table that I do my setups and all the finer stuff. Um, I couldn't find a felt big enough uh, so I just bought this cheap yoga mat and it'll do Basically anything I need. It's soft, it's easy to clean, you can just take it off, sort of hose it down if need be. And yeah, so I have my three shelves here. This is where I keep tools and stuff. This is uh, parts and glues. 
And this is like machining stuff, files and such. Uh, I have my carbon fiber rods, my frets, my gouges. So that's basically my, my little workshop. But I can make guitars here, so I'm happy with that. All right, let's uh, get into putting uh, some uh, to marking out and routing where the pickups go. All right, so here we're back at my body. So I have this template that I have for my own because this is for the Hecaton. Now, my neck pocket needs to be in the same place, but it's not that critical. I'm just gonna roughly mark it out. And then this pickup can be in the same place and we'll have to measure if that could be in the same place. Now, follow the center line. So I'm just gonna mark this out. And this. So there. I don't know if I can see this. Try to tilt it down. All right, so <clears throat> I have this humbucker routing template thing that I'm gonna use to mark out where the pickup goes. Now I want this to be as close to the neck pocket as possible with only like a couple of millimeters to spare. And that is because I want the neckiest neck pickup sound I can get. So that seems pretty okay. I'm gonna mark this out. Now it's just rough marking. We're not gonna route anything yet. And well, basically what it comes down to all in all, where your pickups go aren't isn't that important. Your neck pickup can pretty much go anywhere. As long as it's between the neck and the bridge pickup. But the bridge pickup needs to be placed where the bridge, where it's not in the way of the bridge. So now I have this. Let's see if you can see that. I have this neck uh, routing template that I have for my Hecaton. As you can see, it's uh, I have holes in it, so I know I can align it perfectly with the center line in, on the body. Now, when you make a guitar, always, always follow and maintain your center line because that is what's gonna, that's what you're gonna measure against all the time. So let's just go back to that marking. There it is. I'm sorry, I'm waving the camera all around. I'm not really used to filming stuff. And it's even weirder talking to yourself all the time while doing this. Well, I'm talking to you, but you're not here, so I'm talking to me. I'm gonna mark this out also just rough, roughly, because we're going to find out where to put the bridge. All right. So that looks pretty good so far, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna put this away. That's oh, my ceiling lamp is starting to bother me. So then, <clears throat> so I, now, <clears throat> this, I bought this off of Stumac and the beautiful Siri, Siricote, I don't know how it's, Siricote, Siricote, Siricote. Uh, fingerboard in a 25 inch scale, which is what I want to use. However, Usually, I would leave some fingerboard uh, under the bridge, uh, sorry, under the nut, but I can't hear because it's just sawn and it goes straight to the first fret, I believe. So I'm gonna have to count this out um, because it's supposed to be a 24 fret. And if it is a 24 fret, then the 24th fret should be just over the edge. Can you see that? Uh, so if this is where the neck goes, it should be just over the edge. That's how I like it. 
then I know the pickup is straight up uh, against the, the neck. So <clears throat> keeping it like this, let's see, I'm gonna, obviously this will be cut off. It's not gonna stay there. So I'm gonna have to mark up the edge of this fretboard just for now. And then I'm gonna count back to the 12th fret and then I'll know where the bridge goes. You see? Okay. So let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this is the 12th fret. Yeah, so this is the 12th fret. Can you see that? I marked it up right there. Now I'm gonna get a ruler and then we're gonna mark up. <sighs> we're gonna measure from the edge, the nut edge, to the 12th fret. And that should be, or it should be. And it is thirty one point eight centimeters. Thirty one point eight centimeters. Let's just write that down. And so now if we put this here right there, can you see that? Um, so then it should be 31.8 centimeters from this mark that we put and to where the bridge is. So let's measure that at 31.8. I have to keep holding this. 31.8. And that's uh, without... All right. Now, okay, so that's where the bridge goes. Now, obviously, every saddle is movable, right? So even this isn't that important on electric guitars because we have adjustable saddles. You know what I mean? So this is where the saddle should go. And you can adjust it either way. Now, usually, I try to, when I have, usually I use individual saddles, not a bridge, and then I sort of tilt them back three, four degrees, because the top strings, sorry, the bottom strings, tend to want to be further back than the front strings, um, intonation-wise. Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> well, let's see how that matches up with the other the one that I have. Okay, yeah, we'll just have to measure that because obviously it's tape. Now this is just packing, uh, that's 17.5 from the bridge. This should be less than 17.5. It is, it's 16.2. All right, so that's, we've done something right. Now, <clears throat> I'll have to put the other humbucker in. Now it's usually it's this template and a half. So the thickness of this template you know cut that in half and add that. That's usually how I would put my pickups. And I think I'll be able to do that as well. Now the bridge is there. Maybe just a smidge closer. I think I'll move it a little bit closer. Sorry, I keep moving the camera all over. All over. So that we have two or three millimeters there where the bridge should go. Usually it's more, I think
think I'll move it even further. So we put the bridge plus a centimeter. All right, bridge plus a centimeter or so. So there. Now I know probably proper luthiers are shaking their heads and pulling out their hair and stuff, but I'm not a luthier. I'm just a guy who tries to build guitars in his garage. So, okay. Now I'm gonna get the bridge and we'll see how that uh, measures up. All right, <clears throat> now I'm running out of battery, I think. But uh, anyway, you can see the bridge here. God damn, this is a good looking bridge. Can you see that? That's a hip shot. It's gorgeous. And it's so sleek as well. I've seen these Chinese copies on eBay where everything is just massive and the chrome isn't really chrome. It's just like unpolished tin, it looks like, or like solder. Of course, this is beautiful. It's beautifully crafted. Yeah, so the, uh, let's see. Pull this out. So this is where it should go. Now I'm gonna move it a little bit because I want to have the possibility to intonate it both ways. All right, so there. I'm gonna mark out where the strings go. And where the screw holes are. Keep always keeping your center line uh, in check. So you can see here, uh, this is where I will drill the holes for the strings, and this is where the bridge should be, is going to get screwed to to the body. All right. So I think that's it for today. Um, yeah, for this video. Uh, and I'll have to change my battery. All right.